are you allowed to talk about your next project? Yes. Um, because I, I found out a little about this from you in the green room, and I was really fascinated by some of the um, interviews that you did with people who were afflicted with the next condition you're going to be writing about. You can say it, yeah. <laughs> ALS. Um, I'm writing about ALS. I've, I've finished. I, we're editing now. I'm, I've written about ALS, Lou, Ge Lou Gehrig's disease, and this one scares me more than any of them. Um, can, you, can you describe what it is? Yeah, ALS is a progressive neurodegenerative disease where you become increasingly paralyzed. So the motor neurons in your brain and spinal cord begin to degenerate and they feed your muscles. And if the motor neurons are gone, your muscles don't work and they'll atrophy. And so people become... But your brain remains intact. For most people. Some people end up with a little frontotemporal lobe dementia as well, but for most people, no, they're perfectly lucid. And that's the scariest thing, really, because you become sort of You're trapped locked in, in your... It's called locked in. Eventually, I mean, Stephen Hawking is, um, is quite unique in that he still has a muscle going in his cheek, and, and they've attached sensors to that so that he can still reach and communicate with the world. But for most people, eventually, if they choose... So eventually, your diaphragm will become paralyzed and you won't breathe, and that's... Without intervention, you'll suffocate and die. Um, and it's fast, it's the, the median time is three years, but a lot of the people I know are here and gone in 15 months. And it's any age. Um, I've met a Yale med student who was just diagnosed, um, many people in their 30s and 40s, um, a really amazing guy who just died in December who's 65. Um, so, but you can get a, a tracheostomy tube and be on a ventilator and be kept alive mechanically indefinitely, but but even on that, of you know, these people who who are on the the trach tube, like Stephen Hawking, will either you know blink once for yes and nothing for no, um, or they'll have a little twitch. But eventually, they, the blinking will be gone and they'll just be locked in. And, and yeah, that that's is terrifying. terrifying. And you said that's the disease that really scares you the most. So um, is that why you decided to write about it because it scares you the most? No, I'm, I'm not looking to do that to myself. Um, and I didn't know what I didn't know to begin with. I, I you know, discover these books as I do the research. No, I decided to write this because um, Richard Glatzer, who was uh, co-wrote the script for Still Alice and co-directed it, he was diagnosed with ALS just a couple months before he read the book and had the enormous courage to decide to go ahead and make this movie knowing it would be the last thing he'd ever be able to do. Um, and so he actually directed this film. At that point, he could still walk. He had bulbar ALS, which means it starts in the head. So he couldn't speak. He's wearing a bib because he's drooling. Um, left arm was totally paralyzed, I believe. And in the right hand, he had like middle finger, I think, that he was typing on an iPad directing this movie. And when I tell you he was directing it, he really was. Like he and Wash were a, a true partnership on this. And I love that. You know, when you, when you show, like today, like you want to show up as your best self, right? We're going to hair and makeup and we're, you know, hopefully a good night's sleep. I'm not wearing any makeup. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, like you're just, you want to show up for anything important to you as your best self. And here is Richard willing to show up with ALS drooling on a set at the biggest movie of his life. And I just was amazed by his determination and his courage. And so I told him... It was September of 2014, just after the world premiere in Toronto, that I wanted to write about ALS in his honor. Would that be okay? And at this point, he's typing with his big toe. That's all he had left for. Yeah, so we communicated a bit that way for a couple of months. Um, and then he died shortly after the Oscars.